Welcome to the Avail Podcast, where we dig deep and talk about the art of leadership. My name is Virgil Sierra, and today we're sitting down with Hope Carpenter. Hope is a wife, mother, author, leader, and pastor of Redemption Church in Greenville, South Carolina, alongside her husband, Ron. Today, she'll be discussing her new book, The Most Beautiful Disaster, and some personal, vulnerable stories from her journey to health, wholeness, and freedom. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Avail podcast, where we dig deep and we talk about the art of leadership. As always, we have amazing guests, amazing leaders, pastors, authors, people who are making a difference in their world and around the world. And we have the great privilege today of sitting with Pastor Hope Carpenter. Pastor Hope, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Pastor? I'm excited to get into this conversation with you. Yes. It is an honor for us to have you as a guest. And you know what? I want to get right into this. I think okay. I think your most recent book is going to be a huge help for a lot of people, a lot of leaders. Uh, and But before we do that, Pastor Hope, I want people to know a little bit about you. Can you share a little bit about yourself and your journey? Absolutely. Um, my husband and I, Ron Carpenter, we passed a Redemption Church. We started Redemption in 1990. Uh, well, actually, 91. We got married in 1990, um, just children, 21 and 22. And then we moved to Knoxville, Tennessee to intern under a pastor just to try to learn and, you know, get our feet wet. We moved uh, in 91 to Greenville, South Carolina to start Redemption. Just humble, humble beginnings. Three of us, me, my husband, our worship leader, um, a metal warehouse building in mm. South Carolina in the middle of summer, no heat, no air, not a recipe for success. Um, but God was with us. Uh, the church over the years grew to thousands and thousands of members and uh, locally and members all over the world. Mm. Um, but man, it was tough going for a very, very long time. We, um, I tell people, that, uh, you know, we had our kids with no insurance. Uh, we ate cheese that didn't melt. It was that government cheese. And uh, but the whole time we had a dream in our heart. We believed that God had called us and uh, we just fought and we scrapped and we clawed and we believed and we had faith and God grew our faith from trial to trial to glory to glory. And uh, the church grew. And now we're in California. We're in San Jose, California pastoring both campuses, uh, going back and forth in our mid fifties. I'm like, God, why do we do everything hard? Why, why do you ask us to do everything hard? But we are doing the hard thing, going back and forth, traveling every month, uh, from California to South Carolina and trying to be faithful to pastor redemption church in both locations. So that's where we are today. The stuff in the middle, <laughs> yeah. is what we will talk about all the ups and downs the ebbs and flows the failures the but the beautiful restoration because that's the god we serve yeah i love this i love stories like this because um it really brings uh hope and encouragement to people who maybe find themselves today where you guys were you know, back, back in those years when you first started. Yeah. So here's what I want to do. I want to jump into this talk about your book, <clears throat> the most beautiful disaster, which by the way, I love that title, the most beautiful disaster. God makes miracles out of our mistakes. Yeah. Let's talk about the book. First of all, um, pastor hope, can you share a little bit, the why, the why behind this book? What's the heart, you know, why, how, how was this born and, and, and why do we have this book now? Absolutely. I think we need about a three hour podcast today, but <laughs> I'll just try to talk fast. Um, the why is because my life crumbled and fell apart publicly on a very public stage. Wow. Um, 2013 didn't start in 2013. That's just where it fell apart publicly. And that is where I started my restoration process. Mm. Um, and so as I was going through my process, and I'll go back earlier, but God spoke to me and uh, said, Hope, what I'm doing in you, I want you to take it and share it with the world because there's other broken people. There's other 
people in leadership. There's other ministers and pastors' wives who are in the same situation and predicament mm. that you've been in all these years, and have, they have nowhere to go. They have nobody to talk to. They don't mm. have a path. They don't have a road map how to uh, be healed because I wrote in one of the Avail magazines that many of us are bleeding while we're leading. Bleeding, yep. And so that was why I wrote the book is with the hope that I could go back and with my vulnerability, you know, we reap what we sow, that I would become vulnerable to share, you know, my failures. And then most importantly, how God restored my life so that I could help other people, you know, walk out their healing. Because it is so sad to me to see so many people just crippled with brokenness and don't know where to go. We don't have the answers because the church, unfortunately, has done such a terrible job at creating a climate to where people can admit they struggle, where we can admit we have sin, to where we can admit, you know, we just don't get it right all the time, especially Mm. leadership, especially us in leaders, because there is a higher call for leadership. There are more requirements for what God puts on us when we lead his church and or when we lead businesses or whatever uh, leadership requires more. So that puts that pressure on us, Pastor, that yeah. we're afraid to say we're struggling. We're afraid to become vulnerable because, you know, then we become the target. But then many of us break down anyway mm-hmm. because we had nowhere to go. So uh, that's why I wrote the book. But my my downfall started a long time before 2013. Mm. Well, you know, I think what you're saying is so true. I think uh, when 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 you have leaders and the pastors, ministry leaders, right? It's 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 exciting to 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 have all the victories and the wins, but there there hasn't been a, a roadmap written out that's easy to find regarding. Man, when you go through really hard things that bring guilt and shame and and uh, criticism, um, yeah. I, I want to you know at the beginning of your book, uh, you have a chapter that talks about the importance of getting real. Uh, yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Why why is it essential if we truly want to experience wholeness and yeah. healing to 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 get real, take off the mask, so yeah. to speak. Why is yeah, that important? Absolutely. That's how I started. My first chapter was talking about my 50th birthday and wearing a mask. We went to a masquerade party. Um, but I said, you know, I'd been wearing a mask for many, many, mm. many, many years before that, um, that no one saw, but I knew it mm-hmm. and God knew it. And, but I didn't know how to take it off. I didn't know where to go. I didn't, I didn't even know how broken I was because um, I was thrust into ministry and, and in my twenties and all I knew was I loved Jesus. I loved my husband. I loved the church. I mm-hmm. wanted to see people come to Jesus and their lives change. But on the inside, I was still so very broken from mm-hmm. my upbringing. And I thought just because I changed my last name and I changed my address that, <laughs> All that was gone away, you know, that, oh, that's in the past. But I had no idea how it had affected me emotionally and mentally, Mm. all of those things, um, until I started trying to walk out life as an adult. And I believe that every adult problem is an unresolved child problem. Um, You know, we take all of those things that were done to us, said to us, how we were treated, how we were abused, what emotional uh, needs we did or did not get. If we didn't get comfort, if we didn't get affirmation, if we didn't get security growing up, we go into adulthood longing, Mm -hmm. longing for you to fill this void and this shopping trip to fill this void and this girl's trip to, and this alcohol and whatever, you know, you can yeah. fill in the things. But, you know, Psalms tells us only Jesus can satisfy the longings of our soul. But we go to all these wells trying to get filled and it's never, 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 never enough. And so I went into adulthood with a lot of issues, abuse, mm. growing up, rape, things that we never talked about. Wow. Um, and And then... Here's Ron, my knight in shining armor. You know, I think he's just going to whisk me away and run off, you know, into church land and everything's going to be fine. 
And I was brought up in the Holiness Church, Pastor, and I love the Holiness Church. It taught mm-hmm. me so much. But, you know, everything that happened and everything that uh, was going on in your life was just come to the altar. Give yeah. it to Jesus. You know, come to the altar. <laughs> Let us pray over you for four and five hours and you get up and everything's fine. Well, I got prayed over and I got up and everything wasn't fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... I had a lot of brokenness and I describe it like this. though. I think this is the best way to describe it. You know, you can have a beautiful house. You can go build your dream house, the most gorgeous house. I'm talking about elaborate, like your curtains match your wallpaper kind of house. You know, you didn't get your stuff at big lots this time. You went and got great stuff. But if, if the plumbing behind the wall wasn't attached correctly, Mm -hmm. And if the foundation has cracks in it, eventually that beautiful house is going to have problems. And that was my life. And that is so many other people's lives because it looks good. We dress up good. We say the right things. We quote quote the right scriptures. But we've got so much brokenness underneath all this beautiful giftedness And that's why so many people end up falling apart in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, because that's really when the fruit just starts showing on the tree. And that's what happened to me at 35, Pastor. I woke up one day, and up until that time, you know, it had been tough. I mean, Mm -hmm. church planting is not easy. Mm -hmm. And so it had been tough. I was working three jobs so Ron wouldn't have to work. We had three kids under four years old with no insurance. I mean, just struggle, struggle. We were on the struggle bus. We were Mm -hmm. driving the struggle bus. (laughs) And so the steam, it was just like the steam was just building on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. And at 35, I woke up one day and said, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what this looks like. Actually, I said uglier words than that. I just threw my hands up and said ugly, ugly words. And that day I started making decisions that took me down a long road of nine years of living a double life. But that day, it wasn't that drastic. That day was just, oh, I'm going to buy a secular CD. Never done that before. I'm going to buy a bikini. Never done that. Never been allowed to do that before. Oh, I'm going to buy a six pack of beer. Never. Oh, you going to hell in a slip and slide, you know, (laughs) buy a six pack of beer. And I did it all that day. And for the first time, Pastor, though, it It was so freeing to me because I had not been allowed to make any decisions for myself up until that point. You know, I was raised in a home. You didn't go to the sock cops. You didn't go to the dances. You didn't go to the sleepovers. You weren't allowed to go to the party. And after much money and counseling, I have learned that I was never allowed to what they call individuate, Mm -hmm. become who who I was, make my choices, you know, stick your finger on the stove, so to speak, and burn your fingers, but learn a lesson. I was never allowed those opportunities. And uh, they'll tell you that you individuate gracefully or you individuate like I did. You're going to do it sometime or another. Mm. The world calls it a midlife crisis, but it's really individuation. And so I started doing that at 35 years old, and it got worse and worse and worse. I eventually was unfaithful to my husband um, in 2013, though living that double life for nine years, the pressure was even worse Mm. because I love Jesus. I love Ron. I love my family, but I had no idea what was going on on the inside of me. So I came to Ron, told him everything that was going on in my life, And um, he suspected we'd been fighting for nine years. Um, And I thought, you know, Ron's my knight in shining armor. He's going to just wrap his arms around me and fix all this. And he said, you got 30 minutes. Get your stuff and get out. Hmm. And thus, the title of the book, Mm -hmm. Most Beautiful Disaster, because what the world thought and what the church thought was the most horrible thing in the world to me. It was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me because I had nothing else to hold on to. I I didn't have a mask to put on anymore. I didn't have Mm -hmm. a preacher's wife hat to put on anymore. I, you know, I was stripped of everything, no car, no phone, no um, income, no health insurance, no nothing. And it was just me and Jesus. And I need to tell you, 
that it was the most beautiful time in my life. Mm. I really, really, for the first time, knew what unconditional love meant. Because when nobody wanted to talk to Hope and nobody called Hope to check on Hope, and there was nobody in my life, I fell in love with Jesus for the very Mm. first time. And that started my healing process. Yeah, I I think one of the things that we underestimate is kind of what you were explaining, the importance if I really want to walk through through healing, I do have to go back because sometimes yeah. we just want to pretend like it didn't happen and move forward. But that's important. There's there's a chapter in your book that the title made me laugh a little bit. Don't just suck it up, Buttercup. Uh, <laughs> can you unpack that idea for us a little bit? Wow. Yes, I love that chapter. Um, what we tend to do is we all tend to what we call push the minimize button when thing, painful things happen to us, mm-hmm. we're, we're like, oh, I'll be okay. Mm. Oh, well, that's all right. God's good. Mm. You know, I'll get through this. I'm strong in the Lord. But we never process how it made me feel, what it did to my soul. Those When it happened, those words that I spoke out of my mouth or in my head, those vows that I made that I'll never X, Y, Z. I'll never put myself in this situation again. I'll never become vulnerable again. And the Bible says what we sow to the wind, we reap as a whirlwind. So it comes back on us so much more than, than when we spoke it out of our mouth. And so we, I really believe that we have to stop sucking it up, stop sweeping it under the rug. Stop acting like it didn't happen and really take the time to process and dig deep. And what were the lies that we believed were true? That's what Mm -hmm. a stronghold is. It's not fangs and fur. You know, it's lies that we take to believe is truth Mm -hmm. in our life. And it becomes a stronghold in our life. Like when it happened, well, I'm not worthy. Nobody's ever going to love me. I'm not called. You know, I'm not good enough to be a preacher's wife. But Satan uses those things that causes our spiral. So we got to go back and unpack Mm -hmm. all of that stuff. That's why healing is not just a one shot deal. You know, healing is like emotional healing is like peeling an onion. It's one layer at a time and it takes time. So, you know, when I hear, you know, these moral failures in the pulpit and they sit down for two weeks, I'm like, Mm, this this probably isn't good yeah. because this is probably going to happen again or in some other shape, form, or fashion because you didn't take the time to dig deep to get to the root so that you can deal with the fruit that everybody else is seeing. Are you following Avail on social media? If you answered no, what are you waiting for? You can enjoy encouraging content, get updates on all our latest resources, and connect with leaders just like you, all from the comfort of your couch. There's no better account to visit in between appointments or over morning coffee. If you haven't found us on Instagram and Facebook yet, look up The Art of Avail and click follow. We can't wait to see you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a process. It's a journey. It yeah, is. I can't even, as you're as you're telling your story, and by the way, I think this book is is such a is such a gem for so many people. The most beautiful disaster because some people maybe are walking through something like this, you know, or or or, or can help somebody who's walking through something yes. like this. But I can imagine for you the process. Uh, you know, it's it's a humbling process, right? Because um, it's hard, and all the doubts going through, probably going through your mind about about your future. And, yeah. and, and, you know, is this possible? I think, I think parts of the journey, there are some parts that seem so difficult yeah. that, that it could, you could feel just really hopeless. So I wanted to ask you maybe to share, what are some practical things that we need to consider when it comes to forgiveness? Cause I think there had to be some forgiveness in this journey, in this story, yeah. Tons uh, when of it, it comes to rebuilding trust, when yeah. we've hurt people and when we've been hurt by people, can you just tap into that a little bit? Yeah, it was, it was such a process and it was quite overwhelming. You know, at, at several points early on, I thought, you know, should I just run away? Should I just go sell real estate in Florida? Should, mm-hmm. you know, should I go sell margaritas on the beach? You know, my life's over. 
you know, kind of yeah. thing. Nobody will ever listen. If I put in the hard work, will people ever listen to me again? You know, well, you know, Ron had no hope of reconciling with me for months. Wow. And so my whole thing was, you know, now what? Um, I don't want to be like God do this great deep work in me and lose my family. Mm-hmm. You know, what a travesty that would be. And spoiler alert, we're still married 32 <laughs> years and, Ooh. you know, God is good. Five yeah. grandbabies later and we are loving life. But it took it took great courage mm. and it took a supernatural gift of faith that that God just downloaded in me in in a in a series of days and um just you know trying to gain enough strength almost like sucking just a little bit of air out of a little baby straw in the middle of an ocean that's the way i felt mm. and but i could cry think thinking about those days but you know that's who god is yeah he gives us he is our strength mm. he gives us strength when we cannot carry ourselves he carries us and he did that for me. And I held on with faith like I had never held on before and believed. And I would write our three children every single night and mail the letters at the end of the week. And I would tell them, I'd say, don't listen to your daddy. Don't listen to your daddy. I said, we're believing for a miracle. So I need you to agree with me that we're going to believe for a miracle. And we got our miracle. But it was such a process. I'm talking about such a huge mammoth process just to believe for a miracle, not even just getting the miracle and then walking out the restoration. The restoration took months and months and years and years, literally, Hmm. literally before Ron and I ever felt even comfortable in the same room again. It was, it was a, it was hard. It was the hardest years I've ever walked through. And So I do understand when people say, this is just too big. You know, this is too hard. This is too much. But it is so worth it. Mm -hmm. What we have today, Pastor, Yeah. there is no way I could put a price on it that I could say, if I had to go through it again to get what we have today, I would do it again. Wow. I would go through the shame. I would go through the embarrassment. You know, it's such a shame, but we our story was the number three story in the Christian news hmm. in 2013. Isn't that a shame? Yeah. We don't glorify, you know, all the wins people have and all the salvations, people being saved and lives being restored. That's what we glorify. Hmm. And um, so I think that's a huge part of the undercurrent of why people don't want to admit they have a problem yeah, uh, because of the condition of the church as a whole. But yes, the process, we had to forgive and forgive and forgive again. Mm. And forgive again. There, we call it forgiving from every angle because once you say, I forgive that because you did this, but what about when, Six months pops up and you want to go on a vacation and then you say, well, dang, I can't go there anymore because that's where you went with so-and-so. Hmm. Then you got to forgive again. It's forgiving from, from, it's the residual effects of the unfaithfulness, the residual effects of the sin or the violation. And we had to learn how to forgive 70 times seven over and over hmm. and over. But I will tell you, Pastor, I was so willing to earn my husband's trust that I really, truly dug into the principle of of restoration and going above and beyond restitution, Mm -hmm. that I was willing to do whatever he asked. I gave him my, I mean, he took my cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone for two years. He took my car for a year. I didn't have a car. I mean, I was willing to do whatever Mm. it took to make him feel safe and to make him feel comfortable with me. And I'll never forget something so simple. The day he he took me to lunch and he had an apple bag and he slid it across the table shaking. (laughs) And he said, I just want you to know I trust you. And I opened it and it was a cell phone. 
But even today, we both have the agreement. You can have my phone at any time. You can go through anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and even married people who aren't even, who haven't even been unfaithful, don't Mm -hmm. want people going through their phone. (laughs) Yeah. But we are we are so at a place that it doesn't matter. You can use my phone all day. I'll use yours. And I was willing to practice restitution, going above and beyond, to pay back more than I owed hmm. because I loved him so much. Yeah, I think that's a good lesson. It's very, very practical, some very practical thoughts. Yeah. If maybe, maybe you're going through a situation – uh, leader that's listening and and maybe you're you're the offender maybe you uh, you know you kind of really made a bad decision there's there's a possibility for restoration and and opportunity for restitution which is going above and beyond i love that concept as as we're kind of hitting the final stretch pastor hope you know i i can't help but think that there are some people that if they were 100 percent honest they they would just say i, I i'm hopeless mm-hmm. and 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 when it comes to the question of can I really be free? Mm. Can I really, can I really be whole again after what I've done? Can, can, can I, can I really be healthy and well spiritually, emotionally after what's, what's happened after what's been done to me, you know, people that might be battling internally with this challenge and struggle. And maybe as leaders feeling like they can't really talk about it with anybody and somebody that says, is it possible to really be free? What would you say? Well, I could get up and run around this whole stage right here and do a praise dance because, yes, here I sit as a testimony, a whole living testimony. Wow. That you can really be free. Hmm. That's why he came. That's why he died. Hmm. Because God knew that we could not, that we couldn't be perfect enough. There there Hmm. wasn't enough blood in goats and rams and pigeons to make us perfect to them. And he had to send Jesus. Hmm. And that's why he came. He said, I came that you might have life yes. and have it more abundantly. It did not say that you would. He said that you might. He's When he sat down and he finished, he said, it is finished. It was finished. But he's given us everything that we need for life and godliness. But we have to pursue it and we have to be willing to do the hard work. Yes, 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 yes. You really can be free, but it does not come free. Hmm. It will cost you everything. Freedom is never free. It will cost you everything. It may cost you friends. It may cost you pride. It may cost you position. I don't know what it's going to cost you. It cost Hmm. me a lot cost me reputation. It cost my name. But listen, I have spent the last 10 years rebuilding my name, rebuilding my relationships. And my name today, I wouldn't take anything for what God's done. And the process he used, he chose to use, he allowed me to go through to build me up, to be more like him. Listen, you won't lead well, and you won't lead long if you are broken. Hmm. It's good. Broken crayons do still write, but it's not the best way. It's not the most effective way. Mm-hmm. And I want to be healthy. I want to be whole. And that's what I want for you today as a leader in ministry or what, whatever mm-hmm. platform you're in. You know, doctors will even tell you that you cannot exert yourself or run a 5K or, or do, ex- do hard exercise if you've got heart problems. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you might collapse in the middle of this exertion. And it's the same way with us. You won't run long and you won't lead well if you've got heart issues and pain that's unresolved and issues in childhood and bitterness and unforgiveness and hidden sin. You cannot Mm -hmm. lead the way God has called us to lead and live a whole and happy life until we dig deep in the bottom of our pain so that God can heal us. That is so good. Leader, you that are listening or watching this podcast right now, we are here to tell you 
It is possible to be free. It is possible to find victory over sin. It is possible to find healing for our wounds from the past. And it is possible to find authority over the enemy and any spiritual attacks, because sometimes there's some spiritual things there. Um, Pastor Hope, I want to I want to take an opportunity for you to just let people know where can they get this book, The Most Beautiful Disaster? What is there a website? Where can they connect with you on online, on social media? It would be great for people to know that. I have a website. It's hopecarpenter.com. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory um, <laughs> where all the information, you know, we're on all the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, all those things. Ron and I have a, um, a, a podcast ourselves. It's called Ron and Hope Unfiltered. Uh, we've been, we just started it January of 2022 and we have mm. loved doing our podcast, but the book, you can get it on any platform, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, anywhere books are sold. Um, and I don't take a dime from this book. Everything that is sold from this book goes right back into Hope Carpenter Ministries because I do missions work all over the world and uh, in the Dominican, in Italy, in Colima, Mexico. And everything that I do, even my, all my speaking, goes straight back to pay for all these missions, outreaches that we do. And not just... I don't know if I could even have the adequate words to say the testimonies that have come through mm-hmm. our ministry from this book. I get them every single day, every single day. I thought I was going to give up. My marriage mm-hmm. was on the brink. We were about to go to divorce court. I was about to lose my mind. I was struggling with drugs and alcohol. It's not just wow. unfaithfulness. It's anything that would seek to destroy our life. This is the same path that saved my marriage and saved my life that can get you off drugs and alcohol. It's the same thing. It's it's Mm -hmm. healing. It is a path to healing. And I just wish everybody in the world had a copy of it. We have it in audible. We have it hardback. We have uh, the paperback, but thank you so much for letting me talk about the book. Yeah. Hey everybody. The book is the most beautiful disaster by hope carpenter. Check it out wherever you get your books, wherever you uh, access those resources. Uh, Want to highly encourage you. It could help you. And, and if somebody comes to mind that might need this encouragement, this message, if a leader or a pastor comes to mind, get it for them. The most beautiful disaster, God makes miracles out of our mistakes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I want to mention real quick before, before we go to a final nugget from you, Pastor Hope, I want to mention the Avail Journal. The Avail Journal here at Avail, we like to produce resources that help leaders on their journey. And we have this quarterly Avail Journal that comes out. If, if you don't currently subscribe, you can claim your free annual subscription. The first year's on us by going to availjournal.com. Pastor Hope had an article in the most recent uh, edition of the Avail Journal. Uh, do you agree, Pastor Hope, that it's good to have resources to help you on your leadership I journey? I love this journal. Just the quality of the journal. Mm-hmm. I tell Pastor Sam all the time that the quality of this journal is just, there's nothing like it. And uh, I mean, our church loves it. We love to have them in our lobby. We give them, you know, to everybody that we know. They're just very, very helpful. Yeah, we love we love the Avail Journal because the Avail Journal helps us help people. And uh, there's so many there's so many helpful articles for leaders, ministry leaders, marketplace leaders. I'm finding here Hope Carpenter's leading while bleeding here in the most recent edition. Here it is, and there's the uh, there it is. <laughs> Yay! There it is. There it is. The Most Beautiful Disaster, which is an awesome book. We want to encourage you to reach out and get it. Uh, Pastor Hope, why don't we finish off with just uh, a final nugget or or encouragement? What do you want to leave our leaders with? Well, if you don't mind, I'd love to pray for people because um, I just do it. Like you just said, there's got to be people out here listening who are just feeling hopeless because there was so many times that I did. You know, it's so sad to say that I was in ministry all those years and up until I was, I'm 53, almost 54, but until I was 43 years old, I led broken. Hmm. And it was so discouraging and it was so disheartening and felt so hopeless. And I just want to pray for people today that, that God would drop courage in their soul 
to do what they need to do so that they can live free. So God, I thank you today. I thank you so much for how good you you are to us. Lord, I thank you that you never, never, never leave us. You don't forsake us. That you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That you don't judge us. Oh, that when you look at us, you love us just like we are. But you don't leave us where we are. Everything that you did for us is that we could experience life. Overcoming abundant life. And today, I ask you to go deep into the heart of the people listening. Yes, God, Lord. infuse them with courage yes, and strength Lord. today to get up and do the hard work so that they can live this abundant life that you paid a horrible price for. Yes, and I thank you, God, that if you did it for me, that the people listening, you'll do it for them. I thank you, Jesus, that we're going to hear testimony after testimony after testimony of what this story and what the redemptive work you've done in my life is going to do in other people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you amen. so much. Thank you so much for that prayer. Leaders, we want to encourage you today with, with hope, with Pastor <laughs> Hope. We want to fill you with hope. There is hope in Jesus. There is healing. There's wholeness. There is freedom. Come yes. on, push forward. Find the people that you need around you. Dig yes. into the Lord. You can get out of anything. There's nothing too difficult for the Lord. Pastor Hope Carpenter is a living testimony of this and her book, The Most Beautiful Disaster, can be a great guide and a great help for you along your journey and anybody you know that might be stuck in a rut, stuck in a hopeless hole, thinking there's no way out. The Most Beautiful Disaster, look it up everywhere books are found and purchased. Get your copy, The Most Beautiful Disaster. Pastor Hope, on behalf of the Avail team, we just want to We just want to take this moment and say thank you for being a guest on this podcast. And we honor you and your your family and your ministry. And we're so thankful uh, to be able to hear this powerful story. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for having me. We love Avail. We love Sam Chan. We love everybody over there. Give them all a (laughs) hug for us. Yes, ma'am. Hey, everybody, I hope you've been encouraged on this episode of the Avail podcast. As always, we talked with amazing leaders that have amazing stories along their amazing journeys that help us as we walk this art of leadership out. God bless you and hope to see you next time right here on the Avail podcast. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Avail podcast with our guest, Hope Carpenter. You can connect with Hope on social media and by going to hopecarpenter.com as well as myredemption.cc. You can also check out the Ron and Hope Unfiltered podcast. For more leadership resources, check us out at theartofleadership.com and make sure to claim your free annual subscription of the Avail Journal at availjournal.com. And if you'd like to connect to our growing leadership community on Facebook, visit availleadershipconnect.com. As always, I'm your Avail Media host, Virgil Sierra. Muchas gracias. Thank you for connecting with us to learn the art of leadership here at the Avail Podcast. Thank you.